In this video, I will be solving practice problems on how to find the molecular, total ionic, and anionic equations for reactions in aqueous solutions. So I talked about the procedure in the previous video on how to find how to find the molecular, which is basically the the one you always use, the total ionic is the that same molecular equation on its ionic form so the atoms that the compounds that ionize are separated into their elements and the net ionic would be the, the simplest form of the of the equation so it will be a total ionic without its aspect area ions so if you if you want to review it just just go back to the to the to the video that I did before this one, its, it's name is molecular, thorionic and anionic equations and I explained the whole procedure. But this video is just to solve practice problems. So well, we want to find the molecular, thorionic and anionic equations. For this first case it says that it's the addition of aqueous iron, 3 chloride and cesium phosphate. So from your nomenclature knowledge you can say that the iron 3 chloride is FeCl3 and they told us that it's aqueous so they did have the job for us pretty much and uh, plus the cesium 3Pl4 that is our cesium phosphate and well by just by looking at it we know that the cation this one will will form a compound with this anion and this anion will form a compound with this cation. So just go with this, just go with this. And well we get that let me write it really small. So it fits this time. Aqueous plus cesium three PO four uh aqueous two. So this will form so I forgot to say it. this one is aqueous two so we have half have the things we need to do. So the iron will will form a compound with the phosphate. So we would have because both have a charge of three. We write nothing. Plus, then we'll have the cesium and the and the chlorine. So it will be this and. If you want to find if this is solid, the liquid, or if it basically is or not aqueous, which is what you want to know now, you have to use the, sol the solubility rules I explained in another video. So, if you recall it, first for 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 this compound, this compound, we we know that all from from rule number six, I think it was. All phosphates are insoluble except for those of group A, uh, 1A, and for ammonium. And iron is not is not part of group 1A. So this means that this is not going to be aqueous. So if it's not aqueous, iron is usually a solid. So this compound is a solid. So because of the presence of of this of this phosphate. This this compound is insoluble in water, which means it's solid in this case. Now for the for our other product, we have we have a chloride right right here. So from rule number three, it says all common chlorides, bromides, and iodides are soluble except for those of of silver, lead, mercury, and, and copper. And cesium is so cesium is not one of those exceptions. So, because all chlorides are, all common chlorides are are soluble, this is going to be aqueous. So now we found all of the if all of its states of matter. So after we do that, you want to make sure that this equation is balanced. Let me let me write this nice before going on. Uh, FePL4 and it's solid. Okay, so we have one iron, one iron, three chlorides in the reactant side, 
and we have what here and one of the products so we put at three here and we have one phosphorus one phosphorus four oxygens and four oxygens so this equation is balanced and this will be our molecular equation I'm just gonna write it like an ME so let me let me actually write this same thing on the other page I'm gonna pause it a little bit so here we go this is our molecular equation it's like the same thing from the last page I just wrote it down so we can have it all in one page now we want to find the total ionic equation and I told you that in the total ionic equation what you want to do is that all your all the molecules that can dissolve in water will separate into its ions so let's start it, it's on both sides on the reactant side and on the product side so let's start with the iron 3 chloride uh, so this is aqueous so we can separate this into three plus and well ions will be aqueous too because they're they have a charge they can they can ionize as the name says and uh, we have three chlorides so you want to make sure that you write its subscript like the if you have like a Cl3 like a 3Cl minus because it's an ion so it doesn't you you don't write it like like this it, it doesn't work that way uh, so you want to you want to make sure that that's how you write it then we have that our sodium phosphate is aqueous too so that will ionize as well so cesium we have three here wait a minute three cesium and it's a charge of plus one so it's an ion it will be aqueous too plus our phosphate for so a good way to know if you're doing it right is that this this number right here matches this number right here so always make sure that this happens um, that is our reactant side so now let's go to the product side I'm going to write it down here so they're not different they're, they're the same equation and uh, now we have that this is a solid so a solid won't, won't dissociate in water it won't ionize in water so we just leave it like like it is and then we have the three cesium chloride so this would be three cesium this is an ion and finally plus three chloride in this case the this number doesn't match this one but it's right because it matches this one so as long as you have the same number of both you're fine and this is what we call our total ionic equation this is the total ionic equation it's, it's how you write it with with your ions in, when they're ionized and now for the non-ionic equation you simply will will take out all your spect all your spectator ions so the, the repeats pretty much you know what so this one will go with this one and what else and the cesium will go with the cesium so you will wind up only with your iron ion aqueous always make sure to, to to write the state of matter and the phosphate and well y forms so, yeah, this is aqueous too and it forms that and this is our net ionic equation so now let's do another one this one tells us that the reaction is between the, is an, the addition of aqueous sodium nitrate and aqueous copper to sulfate so again they're telling us the, if that they're aqueous so they're doing half of the work we have them so let's start with the molecular one like you are and it will be NaNO3 and this is aqueous 
plus C this is capitalized C U S O four and they told us that this is aqueous too. And what this forms is well C U N O three because by the same procedure we did before and it has a charge of two so you just put the parenthesis this we'll we'll figure that out later and then we have NaSO4 so we have to figure out using the solubility rules what what is each of them so we have a nitrate here nitrates are always soluble so they're aqueous and in the other one we have sodium and sodium will always be aqueous too so whenever you see a nitrate or and a sodium those those two compounds will always be aqueous they they'll be soluble so that is our molecular equation now let's find our total ionic so pretty much everything will dissociate and actually i forgot that we have to balance this so there's a 2 here I forgot to write that the the sulfate has a charge of 2 so we have two sodiums in this side too and so that changes our no 3 same copper and only one sulfate so yeah that's it now we have to to dissociate everything so we have 2 Na plus plus 2 NO3 minus this is their ions plus copper with a charge of 2 he told us that and therefore this has a charge of 2 minus so the charges match so we'll find and what the on the product side will have pretty much the same We have two of these because of the subscript next to the parenthesis. Uh, two sodiums, and finally our sulfate to minus aqueous. So that is our total ionic equation. It's the prolonged way when everything is in their ion form, and because we ev everything is soluble, uh, everything will di will dissociate into into its form. And well, as you, you as you may figure out, you, you may think, well, if everything dissociates, well, what will be our, our net ionic equation? Because everything is a spectator ion. This will go with this. This will go with this. This will go with this. And this will go with this. So our net ionic equation we will simply write no reaction. Because, well, nothing really occurred. It was the same on both sides in our total ionic equation. So, all of them were spectator ions, and all of them just cancel each other. So, you simply write no reaction, or, and, or, or. If you don't want to write a lot. So, there was no gas, there was no liquid, there was no solid. So, there was nothing really different from the reaction. That, therefore, there was no net ionic equation and those are two problems that will be very helpful because they're, they're they, ha they have exceptions they have a solid this one has no reaction so you can figure out pretty much all the problems